Our comfort zones are a pretty nice place to live and sometimes it can be difficult for us to branch out and move away from that. But to allow ourselves to grow, sometimes we need to do things that push our boundaries and make us feel uncomfortable. For me, my comfort zone is drawing portraits of girls. And in the last two years, I can probably count on my hands the amount of times I've drawn something that isn't a girl. So today, I'm stepping out of that comfort zone and forcing myself to draw something new. In this video, I'm going to be drawing a building. I thought I could talk you through some of the process and also my thoughts as I was attempting to make it work. Okay, so let's begin. I'm starting by finding some really good reference photos from Pinterest to help with the building design. Side note, anyone who tells you that references are a bad thing are trying to sabotage you, I promise. I put them into a mood board using the app Visref and I chose these photos in particular because I really liked the design of the buildings. Also, Betty's Tea Room is actually a cafe in York that I used to visit as a teen, so this felt pretty personal to me. Before I start, I want to mention that I took a Class 101 course by Angela Howe Art and this was incredibly helpful for learning how to break down the process of illustrating a building. The link is going to be in the description if you would like to check it out. Now to procreate. This first stage is all about getting down the main shapes of the building and also the placement of the foliage. <laughs> I'm using a pretty big brush and I'm not thinking too hard about getting the correct perspective right off the bat. From the reference photos, I combined the base of Betty's tea room with other elements from the pink building. When I move on to the line art, I turn on the perspective guide and place the perspective point just above eye level. Whenever I draw straight lines, I turn on the drawing assist function to make sure that everything is perfectly straight and that the perspective is right for any objects that are positioned any closer or further away from us. For the foliage, I'm not drawing every single leaf but keeping things light and airy with some defined clusters of leaves at the outer edges. Next, I'm moving on to the colour. I start with the plants and then begin working on the building below. Whenever I add colour to a new section, I'm trying to consider the lighting situation. So, I wanted the light source to be coming from the top right hand corner of the canvas, meaning that the tops of objects would be in the light and the bottoms and the sides of objects would be appearing a little bit darker. Although this type of drawing is definitely out of my comfort zone, as I'm progressing with the illustration, I feel very calm. <laughs> Portraits are a little tricky because the anatomy of the face matters a lot, so if the eyes are a little wonky or something, it can mess the whole thing up. To not have that pressure of everything having to be 100% perfect is almost therapeutic for me. It's a little hard to see, but once the flat colors are down, I start to work on the shadows. I'm using a layer set to multiply mode with a deep blue colour to create some contrast. I want it to feel like sunset lighting, where there are some strong shadows but also some nice orange light coming from the sun above. This is actually my favourite part, there's something so satisfying about creating depth. I especially liked adding the shadows of the foliage because it creates all these interesting shapes that really add to the atmosphere. I'm almost finished now and adding some further detail to the plants, some subtle highlights and shadows to really give texture to those bushy leaves. Then I'm going back in with some more shadows from the parts of the building that protrude outwards and also adding some subtle highlights in an overlay layer. To finish up, I finally add in that golden sunlight that I talked about earlier and I also add some small dust particles in the air for additional atmosphere. And just like that, my first building illustration is complete. I must admit, I did actually cop out a little bit because I initially wanted to add some further details to the front, for example, a bike and a coffee table, but in the end I decided to leave it because I was already pretty overwhelmed by the amount of details that were required in the building itself. This is definitely something that I want to work on with time. I think it's great practice to challenge ourselves like this. When you put yourself in a situation where you have to think outside of your regular box, you can learn lots of new things that you can then take with you into your regular art practice. After this exercise, I'll definitely be thinking more critically about the lighting in my illustrations and also adding more depth. It also gave me a little boost of confidence to try out more environment studies and also even bring in characters to create some more story-driven illustrations. I'd just like to thank Angela again for making such an amazing course. I learned so much and as I mentioned before, the link is in the description if you want to check it out. Is there anything new that you're wanting to try out this year with your art? Let me know in the comments. I really appreciate you clicking on my video out of all the other videos on this platform, and yes, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Thank you so much again, and bye!